it's my pleasure to welcome you here at the third year of uh, Queering the Industry Industry program here at Mezi Batra. And it is my big, big pleasure to welcome here our three lovely guests who are all three um, filmmakers uh, and activists working uh, in Europe, but they are originally from China. By my left, it is um, Suk Xiaoxi. Am I saying it? Right. Okay. Lisa Zitian and Fan Popo. And um, at first, I would like if you could all, if all of you could introduce yourself a bit and mm -hmm. what do you do and what have you made so far? Okay, uh, my name is Xiao Xi. Uh, obviously, I come from China. Uh, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a film director, I wrote uh, my own film. Uh, when I was 19, I went to South Africa to study fine arts. That's the first time I left China. Uh, I've been there studying many uh, painting, sculpture, drawing, but my main interest is uh, video arts. That's why at the end of my year, my professor suggested me to study filmmaking. So then, after that, I went to Los Angeles to study a master program of filmmaking. Uh, after I finished that, uh, I, I actually I met my partner, and now it's my husband. <laughs> Uh, we co-direct the film together till now. Uh, later I go back to China and start to build a production company in China and we also make, continue to make a few short films and uh, we did a, a, a series of a short films uh, about the LGBT uh, community in China. Uh, one of the short called uh, Floating Melo was screened in Miss in 2015. Uh, and the last one we did called The Sunken Plan. It, it was like one, one of my most successful short film because we went to like almost 120 film festival and we get quite lots of work. Uh, I'm very happy about that. Uh, later we came back to Spain and because of pandemic, right now I cannot go back to China. So I decided to work in Spain right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> my name is uh, Lisa Ziyang. Yeah, my Chinese name is Xiang Zi. Uh, I'm writer, director, and uh, editor, producer because uh, because I mainly work on low budget film. And uh, I uh, collaborate with my husband, who I met in New York in my school. Uh, by the way, we are from the same film school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we don't know each other. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, so uh, we did a, a Chinese language film called A Dog Barking at the Moon. It was uh, uh, screened in Berlin in 2019. And um, we won to uh, quite a few um, important LGBT uh, film festival after that. And uh, right now, I'm working in Barcelona with my husband. Last year, we pr uh, produced uh, his uh, uh, debut. It's called the Ombligo. It's a Spanish family uh, drama. Now I'm working on a uh, Spanish language uh, script about uh, a lesbian couple um, getting married in Barcelona. And uh, pretty much that's about me. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Popo, uh, Popo Fan, full name. Um, I'm firstly a filmmaker myself. And I studied uh, in Beijing Film Academy from 2003 and 2007. After what I've been making documentaries until 2016. And 2017, I moved to Berlin, um, where I am based now. Uh, so from there, I make more fiction uh, films. And besides filmmaking, also um, curator. So I know Xiangzi, both Xiangzi and uh, Xiao Xi from their film. So um, a programmer for Beijing Queer Film Festival, now called Love Queer Cinema Week, and we show both their, of their film. Also have a, a long-term collaboration with uh, cinema uh, in Berlin called Cinema Transtopia. Uh, I curated one uh, a film series about Chinese queer films and showed uh, Song Kun Plan by, um, by Xiao Xi. Uh, besides that, I'm also um, uh, 
uh, writer, so I have a column uh, in China, I, I write in Chinese mostly about the film and sex, but in the end it to be about sex <laughs> more than film. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, I got an invitation uh, from Messi Patri uh, Pat uh, Patriot in 2019 uh, when they screened my film Floss. But that time uh, it's conflict with another schedule of mine already planning in advance. So I feel very honored to be here today and eventually in 2021. Okay, thank you. And I'm sorry I forgot to mention at first if you have any questions during the during the whole panel, don't be afraid to ask. Just like raise your hand and just speak. And uh, Lisa actually brought something for you if you're going to ask a question. So I'll just probably tell yeah, us what it is. It's a Chinese candy, it's called the Big Rabbit. And uh, uh, when you open inside, it's a very sweet milk candy. Outside, it um, looks like a transparent paper that's eatable. It's made from rice. So uh, don't mm, be hesitate on eating the whole thing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thank so you. be ready for your question. Yeah. <laughs> and be ready to eat your way through. Our yeah, and Pupu forgot that he also performs stand-up comedy in Berlin. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. In, in, do you perform in Chinese or in, uh, in English. English? English and a little bit German, but making making joke about German. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are the actor as well. You act in your own film. Yeah, almost forgot. <laughs> so also acting some some with some other video art. Uh, okay. Because it's in Berlin, they need uh, uh, Asian face and. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So, so you do almost everything, right? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> So, uh, all of you kind of mentioned it in your brief inter introduction, but. Um, if I'm not mistaken, all of mm -hmm. you started working outside China mm -hmm. first. Yeah. Or what, were there any like little glimpses of work or were you trying to work when you were back there, back there in China? Or you um, thought of your start of your career outside and was not possible there? Mm. And for me, I, I finished my study in America, in Los Angeles. I don't feel like to stay there because first of all I feel it's, it's, it's too commercial there and this is not the, something I want to do because I want to be a, a director who will be able to write my own story and, and you know how difficult to be a, the Asian director to work in Hollywood so mm -hmm. definitely that's not my, my, my purpose. So first thing I think about is go back to China because it's my country and I know the culture well. I think I can write a, a very good story back to my hometown. And I have a lot of hope, and I go back to China, I meet so many producers. At the beginning, everybody quotes you because they think, oh, you are a director, you study international, you know, Hollywood and stuff. They want to work with you, and I was have a very big hope that later this is all, all the disappointment, you know, because they want you to be creative, they want you to be more international, your movie, but at the same time, they want you to do the same thing. They want you you know, just follow the, the certain thing. You cannot express something you want. And then I, I kind of a little bit disappointed. So me and my partner, my husband, we decided to do a production company, mainly focus on a little bit commercial work. At the same time, we make money out of it. At the same time, we want, we can able to do our own work. Because we feel like we need to really need to write our own story. Then we start making film like more kind of underground, especially related to LGBT issues. And that's something was, kind of taboo to, to do it because you can make the film underground but it will be never able to show in the cinema and you will be able to um, only able to find any fund. Nobody gonna fund this kind of film. So it is kind of difficult I noticed. And and during that time we still managed to make it. We we, we do a crowdfunding, we we finding a friend, we do a casting for gay character. Everything's difficult but the I we I didn't manage to make it. Then we aim the, the, the work mainly to the film festival we see like a Google, like in other country. Uh, yeah, that's that's the same for, for me in China. I, I feel a little bit disappointed, but at the same time I do get lots of inspiration when I work in China because this is an environment I know the most and it's something I want to work about it. So yeah. So. Um so how do I start? <laughs> uh, I have the same same stuff oh, with you because okay. um, after studying in New York and uh, in our campus in Los Angeles, I realized 
uh, in Hollywood, there's not much space for me to develop uh, or to be a um, director um, mm -hmm. in one or two years. Of course, my goal is to make my future film. And uh, so I uh, went back to China because in Los Angeles, all the job that I could get is a teaching assistant mm -hmm. or a camera assistant, things like that. <coughs> Um, but uh, with our um, study in America, which is good because uh, we learned a lot of uh, useful skills and how the industry will actually run the film set, which is quite good. Uh, one, one, I went back to uh, China and we prepared our film. Uh, it's because actually when I was working in other Chinese uh, film sets, um, or web series that there are some chaotic things like uh, too long hours of shooting mm -hmm. that sometimes could be stretched to 16 to 18 hours and uh, it's quite different from what we have learned mm -hmm. which is like 12 hour shooting so I feel like okay if I'm working as a assistant director on this chaotic set I feel that I'm betraying what I learned like respect uh, uh, my co-worker yeah. colleagues. So in that chaotic set, I decided to quit my job and went mm -hmm. back to Beijing with my husband to start to develop my own story. So we finished shooting it, and uh, of course, mm, with uh, all these mm, difficulties, because in my story, there is a, a character that's <coughs> in his uh, 50s, and uh, he's apparently bisexual, of course, and when I tried to cast for this role, and I sent my script um, to several kind of famous Chinese actors, and then they reject my proposal to be um, acting in that part because they have their concern about uh, acting as a bisexual, you know, like, mm -hmm. so in the end, we... Which one you uh, the, <laughs> and uh, so in the end we have to hire somebody is not, not that famous and he doesn't have much film uh, experience but with a lot of TV show in the back and he developed commercials um, which worked for my film because in the film the father role is important but not doesn't appear that much so mm -hmm. he's either out of focus or in the background so to me it's not that important it's mm -hmm. more about the mother and the daughter so mm -hmm. it, it worked mm -hmm. for me yeah and maybe can I uh, have an elaborated question oh, okay. because all of you mentioned that you studied abroad mm -hmm. and you mentioned that the Chinese set are quite chaotic with a lot of overtime, etc. How how is the like film education in China? Were you even like thinking studying film in China, or it's not perspective at all? Oh, uh, if for me to answer it, I can only answer for the set that I worked on. So oh, I okay. think big budget with famous act uh, actors and the directors is totally different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. environment. Yes. They respect certain rules, of mm -hmm. course. Is well controlled, but as a newly graduate um, mm. person, I was working on like not that famous yeah. crew, and mm -hmm. it's more a quick job or something like that. So I can only speak from my own experience. Mm -hmm. So I guess that in big production, they are more uh, industrialized; they mm -hmm. run better than the one that I have been. Mm -hmm. And also for um, film education, because I didn't learn film in China, I learned economic, mm -hmm. uh, and I learned filmmaking in America, so I cannot say for the Chinese film mm -hmm. uh, education. So I think mm -hmm. it's a more question for Popo, because he learned filmmaking in China. Beijing. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Well, Even um, when I was but for me, entering a Beijing film, film Academy was just an accident because when I was in high school, I have I have very big passion on literature. So it was my dream to be a writer. Uh, but then the system in China, education system in China, that so you have to be good at everything. But I was so bad with mathematics, mm -hmm. and I just uh, <laughs> read something on magazine saying if you are bad with mathematics, you should go to study art. And then <laughs> I just tried Beijing Film Academy and just got team. I heard you don't need to study mathematics in film school. So that's the beginning of the reason why I go to uh, uh, study film. 
Um, but I have to say, I hate it so much. <laughs> the, the whole four years, what I was doing was mostly just fighting with professors. Mm. And uh, but this is also a little bit the tradition of me. I, I was fighting with a teacher from kindergarten school and to primary <laughs> school. And then I think middle school was a little bit quiet, but high school I uh, again was fighting with all my teachers. But then the, the specifically the Film Academy, even though we say it's already maybe much more open-minded than most of other uh, uh, schools rather um, than um, you know, non-art universities, mm -hmm. but still, uh, I have homophobia professors who uh, uh, who, who said homophobia, uh, homophobic, uh, mm -hmm. use homophobic language on on class to describe what I was writing, and uh, of course, I would, I uh, they, I had an <laughs> argument with him, and in the end, I. I end up I cry and running out from the classroom. It was very dramatic. It was because at that time I was really afraid if I would would graduate it would be able to get my degree. You know, when I was twenty years old, and uh, so we have this panic too. On the other hand, the, uh, the they also so they were so uh, I think I hope they have changed at least at uh, back then. The professors are very uh, proud that they took the. Uh, uh, Russia, not not even Russia, Soviet Union uh, film tradition, mm -hmm. and uh, knew the realistic, mm -hmm. realistic uh, uh, film, uh, realistic realism uh, filmmaking. And if you do anything experimental, and you get criticized from your from your professor. And the second thing I don't like, and thirdly, uh, I feel I most of my classmates and learning about the society from watching films and watching TV. And uh, in film school, in my film school time, I already started to take some uh, writing job for a um, TV show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel everybody is copying another person. And you don't need to know uh, what the reality is, what is happening in society, just to keep on uh, copy from Korean uh, uh, TV show, from Japanese TV show, a little bit from Hong Kong uh, 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 film industry, and then uh, this is your creativity. So at that time, or I already realized I don't want to uh, continue this kind of job after I finished the film school. So luckily, before I graduated from Beijing Film, film Canada, I published a book about uh, uh, queer films, and which was so well. I had a little bit of saving. With that saving, I I bought a camera. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say I wanted this camera to be my teacher because I was very shy when I was in, uh, in film school. I was always sitting in the back row and didn't uh, dare to even bring up the, uh, a question. Um, so having this camera gave me the perfect, perfect excuse to interview other people and have a conversation with, uh, uh, with, with the society. Uh, so that's how I began a, a trial uh, as a documentary filmmaker, and this trial went um, uh, for three, for, for actually nine years from two thousand seven to until two thousand sixteen. And um, okay, so um, so all of you moved to Europe, and all of you are living right now in Europe, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So did you feel like the the move? Mm. Uh, from your culture and from your uh, home mm. influenced your work and if how because like I'm pretty sure it did somehow yeah. right mm -hmm. um, for my case because most of my work I co-direct with my husband and he's European so more or less for our work is like kind of a combined something European mm -hmm. idea and Chinese idea it is interesting because uh, my husband is Spanish I'm Chinese but uh, I don't understand Spanish and he doesn't understand Chinese. So basically we communicate in English. So when we're shooting film in China and he doesn't understand all the actor what they're saying mm -hmm. and we're shooting film in European, in Spain, I don't understand what they say. And actually sometimes it helps because as a film director you get the actors through the, uh, the facial expression, the gesture, so actually you, you can direct them more correctly. So that's, for me, that's kind of uh, interesting. And in terms of uh, affect, uh, my work, I think it kind of uh, opened my mind a little bit because um, no matter where we're shooting in China or European, we more focus is to create a character. 
I think that something very important to create a character which is universal. So somehow we make a film in China when we show in the European film festival and people can get it very easily. They feel like maybe it's different culture, but they understand the situation of the character. Like the latest film, short film we did, Sankan Kwan, is talk about a transgender Chinese woman, how she gonna come out to the family in the village. When we screen in, in different country, uh, in Spain, in France, in even in India, and so many audience that comes to us, they say they, they, they feel it, they feel the character, and they feel related. And that's made us very happy. It's a, a hard question for me because um, <clears throat> I haven't directed a film since I moved to Spain. So I was producing my husband's film. So right now I'm writing a script. Uh, well, my situation is very tricky because I'm writing a Spanish story in English mm -hmm. and as a Chinese director. Just as me. So to me, it's like uh, sometimes I stuck in the middle mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, this doesn't sound very legit to me because I feel there's two walls between me and the, the character. So I actually uh, leave the script on my desk. I called uh, language school. I started to mm -hmm. learn Spanish. And I was thinking that that's something really um, important for uh, a Chinese director living in another country. Maybe the language thing is a big um, obstacle that if you come over it, you could actually get better on your craft. Mm -hmm. I think for me, if I cannot uh, really, really connect to the culture, I don't feel very confident mm -hmm. to to write the, their story. Mm -hmm. Because in, in it's different uh, with your case, because the one, you guys co-direct, co right? Yeah. Because mm, oh, me yeah. and my husband, okay. we don't co-direct, okay. but uh, um, so if I'm shooting, uh, I'm directing, he's producing. If he's directing, I'm producing. Okay. So in this case, um, I feel that language is uh, one of the things that actually mm -hmm. affected on my creative process. Mm -hmm. So. Mm, but I think the move actually uh, helped me to open more doors for me. And uh, I think when I'm uh, living in the environment like a Spanish-speaking country, I feel my character, myself, mm -hmm. is more open. Like, it's because as a Chinese woman, I feel sometimes not very good at uh, connecting with people because I'm, I'm maybe introvert and... Uh, um, at times I'm shy to talk to people that I don't know or I don't, I, it's hard for me to find a topic. But if I'm actually speaking Spanish, I think my skin got thicker somehow. <laughs> Especially with a couple of drinks, I think I can speak any language. <laughs> so I guess that's what the move did to me. But uh, I have to see why I direct so I can talk more about how did it actually affected on my uh, craft. Oh. And you live in Barcelona? Yeah, in Barcelona. So you had to go cut the line. Yeah, after the <laughs> yeah, after the yeah. Castilian, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it for you, Frank? I think I think language is definitely such a topic. And yeah. recently I'm also writing um a, a script. <coughs> my my feature um <coughs> project is about uh, uh, it's a romantic comedy happened in language school. Mm -hmm. But the advantage is that I I wrote broken German, mm -hmm. which is, uh, which I am really good at. So <laughs> I can't say so uh, they said, Oh, do you need to learn German for for this project? I said, no, no, I need to keep my German uh, very broken. So I know the I know remember the the, the feeling about uh, when you could not handle language and mm -hmm. there is a, a also part of the uh, the comedy uh, mm -hmm. element. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, in my previous project, I did uh, um, three or uh, um, two short movies uh, in Germany and three uh, different videos and short videos. A video is a video art project or for some small video for, for TV. Um, and my parents was uh, very much. I don't have a. I don't have a European husband, uh, but I have different European producers, which I really, really rely on. And so they speak uh, German, so they would deal with the, the, the bureaucracy, the tones of uh, of 
paperwork we need to do every time, and also help me proofread my uh, my German. Actually, I uh, I uh, appear on a, in a few projects actually speaking German. They know German language is such a flat uh, German itself is such a flat language. As long as you can see, uh, you I sometimes even didn't know what it means. I can just read and memorize. So the script is there. I can. Uh, they also want this. Oh, this uh, 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 not influent, uh, not uh, fluent German. Sometimes they need the a Chinese accent, and so it it helps. On on the other hand, and so making the disadvantage to be the advantage. Um, but uh, um, somehow, of course, you're back to your top. Uh, your um, you are passionate about it. did it change our our topic and uh, but for me of course I think uh, when you were in China and uh, you were the majority at least your skin color is is the, is the majority and uh, but uh, your sexual orientation your sexuality is minority so it is something you want to not always you want to emphasize it it's just other people the the way other people see you and in the German society of course. Uh, maybe being queer in, in Berlin is a little bit normalized now, also uh, where I live and uh, 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 very queer friendly. But somehow they see your uh, your skin color is different and you, you even within the queer community there is also a uh, dyna dynamic of, uh, of you as an Asian queer person compared with uh, uh, the who are white or compared with other minorities. So. Uh, this is a topic I'm, I'm working on. I always uh, always say uh, being in Asia in, uh, in Germany is a little bit similar to being queer in, in China. You are allowed to exist, but you are not seen on media and TV. So this is a, a, a basically I I'm, I'm continue this uh, uh, activism uh, kind of filmmaking, uh, trying to raise uh, the visibility of marginalized uh, groups and communities. Yeah, uh, like all of you smoothly moved to my next question okay. because it was um, whether the language was the biggest difficulty okay. here in Europe or if there were like any other stigmas that are concerning you as an Asian mm -hmm. uh, author living and working here. So, do you, w w do you all agree that it was language, the biggest difficulty during your start here? Uh, for me, I think, probably, I think, yes. Uh, I think it's one of them, and mm. another is bureaucracy, because if we want to get some mm. fundings, mm. and uh, yeah. uh, because we don't know that language very much, we spend a lot of time to research online to see if we can get funding from yeah, the yeah, government. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the difficulties. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I think you know sometimes it's even not a uh, exactly bureaucracy. It's a uh, how to how to get trust? How to find a good collaborator? How to let pe people trust you? And uh, I had to experiment sending my uh, my treatment to some producer, and uh, they uh, after a few months I met them again, and in, in a party and I said, "Have you seen? Have you read my treatment? How do you think about it?" And uh, he still he never really touched it. He never really opened it. It's not like it, he read it and don't, doesn't like it. It's just that they they. They just don't have time for you because it's not uh, you're you're not on their priority. And uh, some of them might think, oh, I have so many projects to do. Why would I uh, produce a, a Chinese queer story? Or why would I? Why would the audience? Uh, how come the audience would be interested and want to see this such a story? I think this is actually the the biggest. And if you can really find a good, my theory is that if you you can find good uh, collaborator who are good at dealing with the bureaucracy. Mm. Of course, for most of the directors, we are we can't really handle this when you have your own creativity mm. and you you can't deal with so much bureaucracy. I know, I think maybe a, a few a few of them would be good on on, the, on both sides. But uh, I think it, it's uh, the 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 biggest challenge for me is it is to find uh, good collaborators who uh, who can trust who would uh, trust me. And do you have a long term collabor collaborator? Sorry, collaborator, because as I understand, both of you do, right? So, oh, you still <laughs> sorry, you're still in the process of finding one, right? Finding producer. Finding producer. Maybe. I don't see it. Maybe finding husband. Sorry. Maybe both. <laughs> 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 I think it's 
uh, I'm going to all cinematographers. So I, every time I meet any cinematographer, I'm like, oh my god, he's hot. And uh, but a lot of the cinematographers are really hot, but uh, never really. Uh, never, but then it becomes professional, and I thought, oh, should I sleep with him or should I get him uh, work for me? And I just keep, keep on it being struggle and. Uh, and Julian, uh, yeah, a few of them work for me, and I said, I'm not going to sleep with him. So, uh, <laughs> but or or producer, or you, you know, I have also have this dynamic. I don't want to be super professional. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I. But another thing, also bureaucracy in Germany is that the uh, fundings are very rely on different states, and if you want to shoot one thing in one state, and then you can't take the same producer to another, even another state. So and also a lot of them are uh, uh, expecting you to bring resource from your home country. Mm -hmm. So they would say because we want to co-production with China. Could you ask any Chinese company who, who can contribute financially? And then I took it has to be another uh, big lecture for me to tell them what is, what is the censorship like and uh, why I'm here, why I'm not uh, doing this uh, in China. But sometimes a lot of people are just ignoring. Uh, they don't, I don't know, uh, they just don't bother to know about uh, uh, what is going on on the top, other side of the uh, planet. If I could add a little bit, it's, um, it's very hard to find a co-producing um, in this topic, like uh, uh, gender morality or queer topic to mm. get a co-producing going on mm. because we supposed to be a co-production like mm. the A Dark Rock and the Moon is mm -hmm. supposed to be Chinese and Spanish co-production uh, co but we didn't mm. receive any funding from none of the country because we are a co-production of China, China and Spain because I'm Chinese and mm. my husband is Spanish and we put our money or family's um, money to produce it and because I need to pass the Chinese censorship yeah. so I could get a Spanish co-production <laughs> logo mm -hmm. and I don't have any nationality for the film so my film is stateless so uh, even if one we screen in Berlinale it was a Ch Chinese and Spanish co-production but it's only because I'm Chinese and my husband is Spanish and in the end if we want to uh, bring a co-production on the film that we want to shoot is very very difficult because especially in Spain they require we have the uh, Chinese permit to shoot to on screen and we can't get it I don't know in yeah, Europe yeah, it's the same, same right same, yeah. Same. Yeah. I think this, this is really crazy I also saw um, in, in international film festival, a list of international film festival writing in the email uh, openly saying we only accept uh, uh, your submission if you get if you pass the censorship in China, mm -hmm. and uh, I was completely shocked uh, when, I, when I read that email. So this censorship is is also going to Europe, and uh, they are and they they didn't they didn't realize how bad it is to. But how about if some Chinese filmmaker don't care about the censorship and they just want to submit? But I think their concern is that there was so many incidents happened that uh, some film was programmed for. Uh, Berlinale for other uh, film festivals they withdraw in the last minute because they uh, uh, the Chinese censor just uh, told them to. But how about the filmmakers who doesn't care about this, this risk? And it will be so uh, so bad for them. So now you can see that uh, some Chinese film they just have the, the uh, some of the company has a shell somewhere in. In, uh, used to be Hong Kong now, or Singapore, or even in the U.S. and uh, it's a completely Chinese, uh, made in China by a Chinese director, but they're considered to be the uh, American film. Mm -hmm. This could, this may be a, a new trend to protect uh, the directors, but uh, mm -hmm. don't know how long uh, they, they can do this. Mm -hmm. Like Popo said, that uh, in the case that uh, there is two, two, two Chinese film that we struggle in Berlin Valley, I was, I was in the same year, our mm -hmm. film was in the same year, and um, we don't have a Dragon logo, but we decided to present our film anyway. And, but we know that for sure we lose the Chinese market, because uh, in that case, we screen our film without the Dragon logo in Berlin Alley, that is uh, like uh, unthinkable. So mm -hmm. I cannot uh, put my film in theater, and uh, also it's like I face uh, uh, 
how to use it. Yeah, the penalty is like uh, five years. I cannot um, do, yeah, do anything from related to in China. Yeah. So yeah. this is the reason you're working on your Spanish phone, right? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So since all of you mentioned it's kind of hard uh, to get a good connection in Europe, is there a good like Asian network or are you guys connected or the Chinese guys that are living in Europe are do you feel like more connected to each other or because Fan uh, Popo mm -hmm. wrote me that uh, he knew all of you before you mm -hmm. met here so is the support mm -hmm. system like at least in this better here in Europe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, I know Popo before, mm -hmm. and uh, I was presenting my film in his festival as well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there is certain support, but uh, I don't know Xiao Xi mm -hmm. before this um, mm -hmm. uh, the Metro uh, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we know each other before and we're both in Spain, of course, there will be support uh, from both the sides. But I guess there is a lack of uh, organization in mm. the um, Asian uh, filmmakers in um, Europe. I guess if we could organize ourselves, have a platform, then maybe we can support each other. But now it's more dependent on like a personal relationship level. Right? Yes. Yeah. yes. I think I think my ob observation in Berlin is the raising of solidarity of uh, minorities, mm -hmm. um, not only um, by the identity of Chinese or Asian, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, um, people, uh, people of color and uh, uh, queer communities, and also become more diversified. And uh, this year, this, this summer, I did uh, uh, with two other curators, uh, one from uh, uh, Indonesia, one from Thailand, and so we did a, a series, film series called Imagining Queer Bandung. Uh, so Bandung conference uh, happened in 1950s in Indonesia. Uh, featuring about uh, anti-colonial uh, um, uh, uh, agenda and also people of color solidarity and uh, but of course in 1950s there was uh, uh, no queer voice was raised uh, at that time so we were saying in 2021 we want to imagine if there was a queer and do not so that uh, we can um, uh, we the people who are pressed in this uh, uh, European white society uh, get together to do something. So we featured uh, in the, uh, uh, we uh, extended the Queer Asia Film Festival to be a Queer Asian African People of Color uh, Film Festival. So uh, we screened with these eight screenings, always uh, Asian queer films and and African. Uh, uh, Queer film, so it was uh, really uh, well uh, re uh, reacted. Okay. And uh, maybe a last question in this area. Um, since uh, you are a member of board, right, of the uh, uh, Asian Queer Film Festival, how is the situation there in China? Oh, you mean Beijing Queer Film Festival? Yeah, and, uh, like, like last year, I <laughs> it was a miracle. It was a miracle last year, and we did it uh, uh, with the protection of the French Institute and the Goethe Institute. It was uh, okay, and I think we were one one of the film festival hold it in, uh, offline successfully <laughs> last yeah. year. So it was such an uh, ironic moment that uh, so many uh, uh, festivals in Europe has to um, go online or even cancel, but. Uh, Beijing has has its its festival, but of course, sadly, I could not travel back there. And mm -hmm. uh, but I remotely remotely uh, moderated a panel about uh, experimental uh, queer films. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, last thing I want to point out is that uh, uh, we uh, the topic of today, queer XL, Of course, we are so earlier. I also was talking with Lisa when you said EXO, uh, uh, and so we are either we are kicked out or we uh, we EXO, we self EXO to ourselves because we don't we uh, we were seeking for some something else or even for them also uh, with the love relationship related and uh, um, but somehow this this years I mean. Um, Approached so many times. Every every time, if the Chinese government has any 
uh, action on on censorship. I was I would be approached by uh, by a European media try to interview me. Usually, I, I I would love to talk with them about all my experience in China, but somehow. The last past uh, past years in Europe, I had to experience a lot, lot of censorship in Europe. And uh, I, in the beginning, I maybe someone said, "Oh no, this is not a censorship; it's a boundary." But now it's really uh, because in two thousand uh, in two thousand uh, two thousand nineteen, I started to also create a sex positive for for a movie or porn movie. And uh, after that, my Vimeo uh, link was deleted. Even they are uh, they are uh, password protected. And I posted some non -ex explicit. My friend posted some ex uh, non explicit content on Instagram. The Instagram was deleted. And uh, uh, I after I complained to to Vimeo, they were saying after we review your film, we identify your film as a uh, porn, not art. If you can prove us that your film has your creation, we might uh, put it back. But uh, if you continue just to upload them, we might remove your Vimeo account forever. But uh, you know, this is such a big threat to us, and we even so it's been so stressless. And uh, it's, this reminds me so much what I experienced in China. But every time I tell the media here that I also want to, if you want to talk about censorship in China, we should also talk about censorship in Europe. In Europe. And, uh, but they said, no, we're inter only interested in China. And this is created the worst situation is that I feel so bad of myself. I've been experimenting three times of racist attack in, in, in Berlin. And uh, two times there was, uh, they, were, they were pointing about the dictatorship in China and all, uh, or using language about China and, or thinking about uh, uh, censorship and dictatorship. But uh, China is more than that. And media here and even some festival didn't tell the difference between Chinese people, Chinese government, Chinese company, and we only have one name, that is China. Mm -hmm. And I feel I um, all those interviews I did and to make me feel that I was a part of the strength to make my community suffering. And especially during the COVID-19 at the beginning, so many of my Asian fellows were attacked. And so sorry I got a little bit even emotional. But uh, this is uh, this is uh, actually uh, also regarding to your earlier question, so the word we never know how it can f uh, uh, flip, and mm -hmm. and we we need to really need to wait and see. And uh, uh, but I have to point out that there are so many of my colleagues in Beijing, activist uh, activist and mm -hmm. and programmer curator and and uh, festival <coughs> workers and doing so much hard working to mm -hmm. make the country. Better. We are not not like everybody was imagining. Like we are in China, just lying in bed and just waiting for uh, the detention detention to smash us. No, not like that. Mm. Mm. And do you feel you are more vulnerable here in Europe because of your nationality or because the topics you're tackling in your movies? What what do you feel like is bigger barrier? Being Chinese or making queer movies? Or it's just like adding up to each other? For me, I feel like uh, no matter where you are in China and Europe, I feel somehow you're doing a queer movie, you, you are kind of a minority. Even in Europe, like such an open-minded uh, place. Because uh, like Popo said the, about censorship, and we realized recently, if you think about politics, uh, this uh, extremist of uh, political part of the right wing, they start taking control. And we noticed so many uh, issues, like about the gay marriage and uh, adopting kids, they, they start to discussion again. You know, you feel like the, the whole world is going backwards. So I think uh, for, the, for the filmmaker, for the artist, uh, we need to be always to reflect what the environment is doing right now. So no matter we're in China, in, in the Europe, we need to always to, to aware of that and to be sensitive of that because there's no any place is truly free then and truly open. <laughs> um, for me, <coughs> how do I put it? I, I never felt vulnerable, no matter where I was or where I am now. Um, 
how do I put it? I feel I'm lack of resources. If I have resources, if I have uh, government support, mm -hmm. or if I have financial support from whoever, whoever wants to support our uh, work, I don't feel lack of anything. I can be very creative. Mm -hmm. That's why I sometimes buy lotteries. Like I'm looking forward to one day that I got like five million euro, mm -hmm. and I will support my fellow uh, filmmakers as well. So not only to put that money to my own project and to other people's project as well. Mm -hmm. So if we imagine if we have enough support, like mm -hmm. economic wise or mm -hmm. government wise, we could. It's mm -hmm. it's actually gonna make our job much easier than now. Mm -hmm. Like we can go through the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. We are not like. Um, don't want to do it. We're not lazy people. Like, if we have the ability of getting money, we can do our job much easier and faster than now. And I think it's not of feeling vulnerable in China or in Europe. It is of lack of resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think also also like echo uh, Lisa that. Uh, I want to see empowered uh, characters uh, of the minority, and uh, we're not just a victim. We are. We have our own, um, of, uh, how to say, um, strengths. So um, that's also my aim. In the next few years, I want to um, feature about uh, uh, empowered uh, Asian queer characters. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you really want to ask me how much I feel the strength of a uh, uh, racial issue and and, and uh, sexuality issue, which one uh, I feel more, I, I would say maybe eighty percent regarding to a racial issue and uh, twenty percent queer. Maybe also because the the, the city I'm living in, and uh, I see a trend of. Uh, uh, Homo normative or even queer normative, and uh, you see, uh, this years I uh, also went to, went to a lot of queer film festivals and uh, or big bigger film festivals have uh, queer section and uh, a lot of films uh, and the new trend of queer films just about uh, those uh, uh, privileged privileged uh, uh, I don't want to uh, uh, tell about a specific country <laughs> but uh, white uh, kids for their understanding uh, what is queer, just uh, what kind of a, what kind of hair, uh, what kind of color I'm going to dye my hair tomorrow and uh, where I can do the more piercing and uh, I'm going to get a new tattoo and therefore them that is queer. No, they don't have, they don't understand about intersectionality. If we, uh, if uh, the way they understand queer is just so, uh, such a, such a, such a bad way to for uh, for for audience to think what is what what is uh, this movement for what is uh, what is uh, why there is uh, um, the there was um, e uh, event related so I so that's why I think I feel queer and then it maybe uh, is less uh, if if more and more queer identify themselves in that image I'm I'm a bit f further a bit clearer about that. Okay. <laughs> you have such powerful answers, okay. which makes me speechless sometimes, sorry. Um, uh, all of you spoke about the freedom, or not so much of a freedom of working here. Do you... Uh, what does even like a freedom of work mean to you? I need mean, to do whatever I want. Exactly, like exactly whatever whatever I want. Mm -hmm. um, that means like it's not mm -hmm. only about uh, the government tell you, oh, you can do this, you cannot do that. Oh, if you are talking about this topic, I need to see your synopsis or script mm -hmm. first. It's not only about that. It's also about uh, mm -hmm. if you work with producer or somebody with money that he or she invested on your project, mm -hmm. they want to have a say in your working process. They want to give you an uh, actress mm -hmm. or actor or someone to work on your crew. It's the, the freedom of, for me, is like the, uh, the ability to say no to whoever or to whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> for me, before, I want to be a, a, a pure artist, you know, like all by myself. So I feel that time, I think the freedom is like you do everything yourself. But later when I start making film, I noticed filmmaking is like a teamwork. You need to work with different people, you need to 
work with actor, talk with the producer, is somehow it is not that true freedom to, to do exactly whatever you want. So for me, the freedom is more into your mind, it's in, into yourself. Like, I need to always challenge myself in, to, in terms of making film. I need to be free, to free of thinking, and don't afraid of anything, and trying to do something always different, different, and trying to be more sensitive to, to everything. So that's the freedom for me. Nothing of freedom. I, I I totally agree both of them, and uh, I want to so want to add one thing that is pleasure. Um, freedom bring me pleasure, uh, as always. And um, sorry, <laughs> um, what you, do you think is a what should be done for you to be able to fulfill the, the, the your idea of, of freedom of work right now? <laughs> oh, for me, it's to win the lottery. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Spain is crazy about the lottery. Yeah. Yes. For you as well? Yeah. Oh. You need to find the European husband. And <laughs> <laughs> the lottery. And the lottery. Or, or lottery. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't believe what I said. <laughs> And uh, uh, Popo already mentioned uh, the outbreak of COVID. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any differences in your work since you are even more disconnected mm -hmm. from your home country? Mm -hmm. Does it affect your work somehow? I mean, like, for, for me, I even yeah. didn't prepare when, when the COVID happened. Because last year, the beginning of the year, I came to Spain. I, I married with my husband and we had a wedding. But uh, nothing to do with we gonna stay in Europe because our main work is happening in China. Then the COVID happened, and even I didn't prepare anything. I didn't bring my clothes, nothing. And my office in China, my dogs in China, everything in China. I cannot go back. I was like so frustrated last the whole last year. I didn't do anything at home. I always thinking maybe next month I can go back to China. Maybe next month. I waiting waiting this more policy come and more strict thing come and they don't allow any foreign in the council. My husband cannot go back and for me it's difficult to get the ticket and so many things. Then I decide probably it's a time to change, I have to stay here. Then obviously this year I realized that so I start, uh, we start writing a short movie and that actually reflect uh, how the minority people, especially LGBT group, how they survive in the pandemic. That's the movie we are doing right now. We just finished shooting last week. So, yes, I think uh, for a filmmaker, no matter where you are, you just need to continue working, always. Um, for me, I, I share a lot of things with you. Mm. But uh, we <coughs> came to Spain to do the post-production of the, uh, the work. Also, that I was pregnant and uh, I was thinking to give birth to my second daughter in, in Spain because our first daughter was born in Beijing. So it's kind of like, uh, it's fire to my husband's family that one daughter is born in China and another is in Spain. Okay, after that, we were thinking, okay, we stay uh, like uh, half a year or one year because if we travel back with two kids, one is very, super young, is not very comfortable. But then the COVID uh, uh, came and I didn't have a chance to go back because of the reason that she was mentioning before. And uh, on top of that, my passport, passport was expired mm -hmm. and I, I take a long time to get a new one. I just got it like two months ago. Oh, no, one month ago. Mm -hmm. And now that I have new passport, there is a possibility to go back to China. But uh, again, still the border is not completely open and there is still a lot of uh, quarantines. Uh, but to me, I feel that I'm more connected to the classical China and the China, uh, the cultural China, yeah. when I'm in Spain. Like, not the China, the real China now, in that piece mm. of land. But I'm reading a lot of like classical Chinese book. I'm going back to my culture and digging in what is the country. When we talk about China, we normally talk about like 200 years. Mm. like from late Qing Dynasty to now. But China have many, many years of history, many, many culture that people don't know. 
And to me, it's like I'm more connected to the idea of the classical <coughs> and Chinese culture now. And I got much more, um, how do I put it, like the whole thing of being a Chinese. Then like it's just spiritual connection? Um, not really spiritual connection. It's like when you read the classical Chinese book, when you read the poems, or you listen to the music, the mm -hmm. Chinese instrument, you feel, OK, we're not just uh, uh, someone come from a communist a socialist country that were now kind of trapped in Europe. But it's more like, who are we exactly? Mm -hmm. Like, we are uh, looking back to see exactly what our uh, influence in the country now. And there is something that's barely being talked in a um, abroad in mm -hmm. other country that's the old China. Nobody knows much about old China. I tell you one thing is like one day in my language class, I received a a, a, tale, a, a homework that in the in the homework it says, oh let's talk about China in Spanish about Chinese. And then on the side there is an illustration of a person of Qing Dynasty with a hat and a long mm -hmm. ponytail in the back. And I was like, come on, you can do better. Mm -hmm. Right? In, we're learning language here and uh, you don't really mm -hmm. look a little bit more about Chinese culture. Well come on, put a great wall or a forbidden city. It doesn't have to put that image. Because that's not China. That's not exactly China. Or how do I put it? It's, I think it's a little bit insensitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Too, that's a very stereotypical China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think to me, a COVID makes me feel even more connected with China. <laughs> For example, one thing, one phenomenon that I just realized. So normally, if I go to, if I travel, so now uh, with the vaccine uh, vaccination, you finally can travel at least within Europe. And uh, usually I go to a different city, I will try local food. Uh, but now <laughs> we, we have been eating uh, every <laughs> Chinese food, every, everywhere we go, we try, uh, we try to all uh, try to try uh, the local Chinese food. <laughs> so let's see what kind of Chinese restaurant they have in Prague. So never feel because before pandemic and usually I travel back to China two or three times and I have a, a lot of a chance to eat Chinese food and also know about what is going on there. But now everything I can learn only learn from the, um, from uh, WeChat and and or uh, or TikTok. I'm a, I'm recently um, since pandemic I was a little bit uh, TikTok addicted. <laughs> I I find this uh, this holder can put my phone on my on my bed and I had be hand free watching TikTok one after another before <laughs> going to sleep. And mostly I was watching just uh, uh, food videos. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you all do yes, that. Yes. 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 A lot. And uh, so this is one thing maybe really I before that uh, I I uh, uh, maybe for their uh, for their situation it's uh, slightly also different because uh, at least Spanish food are good and uh, you know you are in Berlin our German food oh thank you and so you know I have to thought oh God I uh, I just rely on all my imagination about one day I go back to China I can eat this I can eat that and uh, dreaming of a dream about China more than more than more than ever. Uh, but uh, n this identity is so complicated when you're also looking at, at what is what is going on there and how much you miss your uh, your acti artist uh, act activist friend there, and uh, it is such a complex feeling. So I'm still digesting it, and uh, one day we'll uh, make it into uh, into art, into film. Mm -hmm. But right now, what I'm doing is that uh, uh, when I'm writing script, always with a uh, food scene. So I know some uh, very uh, high-profile catering service, and uh, when we. <laughs> So we will have a real food on set, and so well, I'm only expecting when we are shooting this, we will, we are gonna have a real hot pot on set, and then so okay, let's finish wrap, let's wrap for the day, and I'm going to eat. <laughs> so. Okay, do you have any questions? Because you have been silent the whole time. I know they're super interesting, but I think it's time for you to ask. Should we break that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> take it out. Maybe there could be a little motivation for you. Not so 
much a question, but I guess, I don't know, a comment on what yeah, I've just heard. Um, for me, it's been really interesting listening to the intersectionality of your culture and being outside of it and being queer and in some cases being a woman and how just the things that we face as women in terms of having children and everything else intersects with your art. So I guess it's just been an interesting perspective for me to hear about and interesting experiences. Um, because to some degree I have intersectionality in myself, but just listening to another perspective has been really interesting for me, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'll just do it for the candy, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will eat the candy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. And so all of you kind of mentioned what, what are you working on right now, so, but if you can repeat with our last question to say goodbye. Uh -huh. okay. What are you working on right now and maybe when we can see it so we can okay. all wish you very luck with that. Mm -hmm. uh, before the pandemic, we are writing a script actually happening in India. Uh, it's about the Hedro community. The Hedro was a uh, transgender in India. Actually, they was coming from old time, and people believe that kind of people they have a strong power. So they have a, a community was uh, they are very low uh, social level, and uh, but the people kind of scared them. So sometimes you go to Mumbai, you saw some some guy dressing like a woman and, and, and asking for money, and people scared of them. People believe they have a power, so they will. Uh, give them money. And that kind of a, a group we are very interested. So we were planned to go to India for three months before the pandemic. Uh, even we write a, a, a full treatment and the, the, the scraper we almost finished, but uh, apparently no, so far we had to wait a little bit because the Indian apparently the virus is still kind of a worse situation. Uh, that's one thing we are working on. And another thing is uh, we just finished a, a short movie I mentioned before in Spain. Uh, it's kind of a short movie, but also we want to develop into a TV series and also maybe a feature film. It involves like uh, 10 or 15 characters. They're all young people. What happens, the story happens in the future. Uh, imagine the pandemic still getting more stronger and how those people are trying to steal in the, the shot from the government and trying to... Because in the future, the, the, we have to imagine, like I said, the, the right wing, they're taking control. The, they don't. They have to protect their own people. So, so many minorities like LGBT group or even some of the uh, immigrants, they don't have a chance to to get the shot. So we are thinking about the, how those people they mm -hmm. gather together and to find fighting with, <laughs> with this kind of government. So it's kind of a fantastic fantastic movie. So, yeah, that's what we're working on. So. Um, for me, like I mentioned before, I'm working on this script about uh, lesbian couple getting married. But they are in their 50s, so uh, they were growing up in the um, post-Franco era in Spain. And uh, so it has been difficult for me. And in the meantime, I was thinking of developing a uh, situation comedy about uh, Chinese restaurant in Barcelona. So, uh, so far, I still need to, oh, the other day, actually, I called a Chinese restaurant. And because they put an advertisement in the website, in the, uh, this uh, uh, website for asking people to work in the restaurant, and I want to be a waitress and to know what's going on in the Chinese restaurant normally, because there are so many stories could happen in such a restaurant. And apparently, I'm not good enough uh, because I have no experience uh, working uh, in a Chinese restaurant before. But I've been t uh, telling my experience to my other friends, mm -hmm. and they said they know somebody on Chinese restaurant that I can go actually just uh, to learn how to which is thing and to listen and watch people's stories. So that's part of my plan for mm -hmm. the maybe next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, right now <coughs> I'm on um, two actually three projects. One is a short movie we're going to shoot uh, mm -hmm. next uh, February about uh, uh, social distance hookup during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another uh, one is the feature I mentioned, uh, romantic comedy happens in um, German language school. Um, 
And then another one is a melodrama love story. But uh, um, I just hand, after I handed out the first draft of the script, and my producer said it was a trash. And she said, I don't understand what is love. So <laughs> it was very melodrama. So I was still digesting all the critics. Um, and we have been having a meeting um, two weeks later. So we will see if it still happening, if she criticized me very hardcore. So. Maybe you can find someone in Prague and understand what it's like later. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's nice. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so thank you. Or you want to ask something? Yeah, go on. Go on and go grab a candy. I wanted to ask, it's kind of like a political question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's possible for uh, queer movies, like the position of queer movies, to get better under current leadership? Because it feels it goes in circles, like the censorship. It's kind of loosening up and then it goes. And uh, as far as I know, recently um, there was a ban of uh, Nyan Kao, mm -hmm. like feminine men. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, for me? Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no, I mean, for me personally, I think that uh, I hope it's going to get better. Because I, um, if I hope it gets worse, then it's my country, right? My parents still living there. And um, of course, I hope it's getting better. I hope that uh, the leadership realize that it can not be like this. And uh, you know, there's a lot of young generation men, more than population, much more than women, right? You know, if you embrace um, LGBTQ idea, identity and everything, it solves a lot of social problems in China, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, practically thinking. Mm. And, uh, well, Big Rabbit, in Chinese there is a, a saying called 角兔三姑, it means like smart rabbit have three house, uh, three holes. Like, I think that they should think a little bit more and stop using their uh, old type of um, ideology and uh, change is better for all of us. And I think there's uh, once uh, uh, Norm Chomsky says something like this, a uh, linguistic uh, American, and he's also an activist uh, with in, uh, now I think he's in his uh, late 90s. Mm -hmm. um, he said that, he, I, I forgot the exact word of him, but uh, <clears throat> it, he said that it's better that you hope better for the future so you can work on for that future that you've imagined. Of course, this is not his work. His work is much beautiful and accurate than what I'm saying. But the idea is like, we all hope for a better future because we all going to live in that future. And in my case, I have two kids. Of course, I want them one day return to China. One day they could be uh, proud of who, who they are. And if they decided to bring their girlfriend to my house to have dinner, they just bring them and they don't have to say anything. And just tell me, oh, there's going to be one person coming and have dinner with us, so I bring more food. And that's what I feel, like personally, like um, as a mother. Yeah, thank you. I believe, I believe there is hope too, and one theory is as uh, Wang Xiangzi said, uh, there are so many loopholes in China, and also a lot of regulation on just uh, 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 movement. So one moment they want to be strict uh, and then afterward they forget, they don't know why all those weird bad relations uh, uh, was invented. And, and secondly, I still um, believe my, um, so many, for so many years and there are activ uh, activists that has been doing work under a lot of uh, stress. Actually, it, it has been always there. Mm -hmm. And organizing Beijing Queer Film Festival also, every year we have to develop a strategy. And one year we, uh, we have to change the location all the time. Mm -hmm. Another year we even screen uh, the films on the, on the bus. Mm -hmm. And the next year the bus uh, company was asked not to rent their bus to us. And then we, uh, we, we organize a group of people on the train mm -hmm. and then uh, give each of them a USB so they plug in and play the film at the, at the same time watch on their laptop and you know 
and also some scholar, uh, some academic just uh, heard about those stories. So, wow, this is a queer, uh, this is a Floyd queer pra practice, <laughs> and it's a, a fucking queer theory. And we are just trying to survive, but you're trying to uh, watching films. Mm. So, you know, with so many, so many strategy, and uh, uh, I believe that the younger generation has hope. And uh, mm. my niece, and she grew up with uh, reading. Um, a Japanese boys love manga, and uh, uh, and even though there is a lot of stereotype, uh, mm. ser uh, typical representation of the LGBT, but uh, uh, when we were talking about it, I discovered I, th I think it was also at least build up a way for communication, mm. and as long as those kind of separate space still exist, and I don't think they can kill it, uh, um, in to uh, totally kill it. So then there is there is still hope, and uh, no more we have uh, I, we have more um, technology developed. So I, I I believe there must be something um, to to uh, at least not not completely make make the country to be that backward on the topic of sexuality. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I also wanted to ask uh, where can I find your movies? I would like to move to the website. So my uh, my film you can my website is popofan.net. Can you type it in for me? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have give you my papers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> give you my card too. Oh. Right? Bring it's an old school card. Oh, you have cards. too. Oh, have cards. Oh, yeah. You search my name and you find my uh, my website popofan.net. My just my name. Um, okay. And then, yeah. There is a uh, uh, one. One column called uh, works, and you will see all the. So some of most of the film are on some streaming platform, okay. and uh, you pay like a few dollars, and uh, um, uh, like Cassie uh, Play and uh, Montage Play. These two uh, platform have licensed most of my films, mm -hmm. so you can also support them, support the independent filmmakers. Okay, mm -hmm. and about it? Um, uh, my short film, uh, Sample Plan. You can search on um, Amazon. I think Amazon Germany or um, you. Yeah. <laughs> take more than one, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah, everybody could take more. It's, we will have a lot. I'm not going to take it back to China, so go ahead. Next time, I'm gonna make a short title. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Farming at the moon. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Thank and you. Sure. Thank you. Best of luck in your work and finding a European husband. <laughs> 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 Open meet again. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been very interesting.